This woman here is Jane Addams, and if you don't know about her, you should. Born in 1860 in a small town about 120 miles northwest of Chicago, she contracted tuberculosis of the spine at age four, which caused a curvature and health problems that would trouble her for the rest of her life. Did that slow her down? No. She planned to be a doctor, graduating from this school in Rockford, Illinois, only one of 17 graduates that year. She moved to Philadelphia to continue her medical studies before health issues derailed those efforts. After reading a magazine about the concept of a settlement house, she decided to travel to London, England to see one of the first Toynbee Hall. Now, if you don't know what a settlement house is, I didn't either until a few years ago. The concept of a settlement house was one that brought together those of different socioeconomic standings and abilities to create a community to help raise up those in need of help. In 1899, Adams and her friend Ellen Gate Starr, that's her, rented an abandoned mansion on South Halsted Street in Chicago, calling it Hull House after the house's owner. Hull House set out to offer various social services to the community, including legal aid, employment assistance, child care, and training in domestic skills. There were kindergarten classes in the morning, activities for older children in the afternoon, and in the evening, adults could participate in what was essentially night school. At a time when infant mortality was frighteningly high and many homes were without proper bathrooms, Adams worked with other area reformers in urging city officials to build public baths for the poor. Chicago's government responded by building 21 modest public bathhouses in the poor immigrant neighborhoods between 1894 and 1918. Adams and the other women from Hull House were crushing it in Chicago as well as inspiring others around the country. Adams was a founding member of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the NAACP, and was involved in the founding of the American Civil Liberties Union in 1920. Oh, and she won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1931. Adams took her share of the Nobel Prize money, roughly $400,000 in today's value, and donated it to the Women's International League for Peace. Get a book about this woman, any library should have one, or check out the full Chicago History Podcast episode about her, and I'll tell you the whole story.